Um, before we start, um, happy Republic Day. Um, I'm so glad that we are celebrating our 70th uh, Republic Day, and I'm proud to be an Indian. Okay, so today um, we'll be talking about um, cake photography. So I guess um, most of us uh, grew up in the 80s, and uh, we had the point and shoot back in the day. And um, I, I know my siblings, um, they really have it in for me because I used to, you know, make them uh, pose, all kinds of crazy poses, um, and uh, take clothes. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Anytime you cannot hear me, just raise your hand and say, look, now I cannot hear you. Okay, so, um, so I started taking pictures back then. Um, I got introduced to a proper DSLR after I got married and um, started uh, taking pictures of all kinds of stuff. Uh, around over five years ago, I um, started my baking venture. And I started small, I guess, like most of us do. Uh, my offerings were pretty simple. I was, um, um, I just had a small menu of cupcakes. And um, I, it's, I started that way. Most of us start that way. But what I did have was an advantage that I did have. Um, I started off with really good uh, pictures of my cupcakes. Um, initially, my husband would um, help uh, take the pictures and all of that. Um, so then the question is, does it really help? Cake photography. Um, why do you need it? Do you need it? OK, let's check it out. So then um, you probably most of you sitting here, you have uh, decided to take your uh, baking to the next level. Probably uh, you know, starting, uh, thinking of starting professionally. Some of you may be already uh, established bakers. Um, for those who are starting, you have um, you know, done your research, you've uh, curated your menu, you have uh, basically you've garnered your audience, et cetera, et cetera, registered as a home baker, all of that. Um, or maybe you're starting off on a blogging, you know, you're starting off uh, cap going to, uh, you want to capture your baking journey on a blog. Um, and all of this entails posting on social media, right? Um, because I do not know, especially for home bakers at our time and age, um, how can you um, run a business without any social media presence? It's pretty difficult. So I've got some numbers of the internet. Um, and uh, what we're going to take a look right now um, see, when you, when you are going to post on social media, what you want to do is uh, you need to um, know how to market. You know, you have to think about marketing and capturing an audience, right? Um, so I've got some numbers of the internet. Um, these numbers are not mine. Uh, I just got off the internet. I don't know the, I have where the, the site that I checked this. Um, I don't know the date stamp, so I cannot uh, tell you exactly whether these numbers are right as of now. But um, Facebook users share um, 6,84,000 uh, 6, um, something uh, pieces of content per minute. Okay? Um, there are more than 500 million tweets on Twitter per day. And there are eight. 80 million photos posted on Instagram per day. Like I said, I don't know these numbers if they are uh, um, relevant right now. If this was uh, probably a couple of years back, then the number has only increased, right? So then, here's another picture that I got. Um, it's probably a little hazy. Um, the, there's, there's a fine print on there that says this, I, I, can you all see numbers on that? That is every minute of the day, right? Um, the fine print says that this, this, these numbers were um, captured sometime, between, sometime around 2011, eight years back. So you can only imagine it has probably doubled, maybe tripled or quadrupled over the, you know, till, 
uh, for now. Um, as of 2011, the internet population was 2.1 billion people. I don't know what it is now. I tried searching for the numbers right now, but I couldn't find any. So, um, what, when you look at these numbers, it is compelling, right? And you want to post and, uh, to social media because obviously you want to run your business and you want to garner an, an audience. The question is, how do you stand out? How do you get noticed? Right? Um, so then we have to agree visuals are no longer a nicety. They are an essential core component of a successful social media strategy. Right? Uh, I mean, they have degrees based on visual communication these days. Right? So, um, what, what are visuals? Well, um, Okay, one more statistic. According to Twitter, tweets with photos receive an average of 35% boost in retweets. Social media strategist Jeff Bullers reports that Facebook posts with photos receive an average 37% increase in engagement. Right? Um, like I said, I don't know the date time for this statistic. I can only assure you, I mean, how many times have you gone on Facebook and you see people sharing all these posts? There is probably very less, very less posts with just text. Am I right? It's mostly content, mostly visual content. Okay. So, uh, if you have any doubts that graphics have any effect on uh, these shared posts. Um, we've kind of, you know, got an idea. Okay, there's, there's something going on here. Uh, right? Um, and, um, okay, so let's look at what entails a good photograph. Um, a good photograph tells your story, conveys your moods, emotions, enhances your story, how to do something or how well you have done something, um, etc., etc. A good photograph will show you that. Um, it is part of your brand, your, the colors and, and the kind of uh, pictures that you take, the lighting, the themes. Um, they all do contribute to your brand image, right? Um, here's another thing. Your images are part of your SEO, your search engine optimization. What is that? Um, so back in the day, when I was starting to uh, use, um, I, I guess everybody was starting to use the internet, uh, pictures used to have tags. You had to manually enter tags for them to be, um, to come up when you put a search, right? The internet, uh, and search engines especially, have gotten so smart right now, um, they have pattern recognition. And so then, when you search for, for example, the color green on uh, Google, you come up with all these images that are green in color. They are not particularly tagged green, but, um, you know, uh, this is your, uh, this is the new age search engines. Right? So your search uh, engine optimization is the process of optimizing your online uh, content so that a search engine likes to show it as the top result for searches of a certain keyword. And there are certain you know, ways how you can optimize your search engine. Um, I am not a techie, so um, I'm not the best person to tell you that. Um, the internet is getting smarter every day and images are one more way to get your blog post found or maybe even um, picture this. Uh, somebody, uh, and this happens, you know, um, uh, when, um, when you, there's a, f a wedding in the family and, and there's a new uh, person that is, you know, there's a proposal and the boy, there's a boy. And um, what's one of the first things that a lot of people do? You go ahead and Google that guy. Right, and then it comes up uh, wherever he has appeared on on the internet. It comes up, and um, Facebook, and, and you know, all of that. So, 
yeah, the internet is pretty smart, smarter than most of us right now, <laughs> right? A good photograph shows a high level of professionalism. If you've taken the pains to take a good photograph or you have employed somebody to take a good photograph, it shows that you're pretty serious about your work. It shows, um, you know, your blog or your business is equated with the quality of the photographs that you present. Okay, so then um, we've kind of, I've kind of made a case for um, taking good pictures, you know, its relevance in the social media, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's um, let's have a case run through, right? So then, um, suppose um, I'm a person who um, posts on Facebook pretty often, um, started baking, and uh, you know, started showing off on Facebook because yeah, everybody shows off on Facebook, right? And I've decided to take make a cake. I've decided to bake a cake, and what's one of the first things that you do? Whip out your um, your phone. I made a cake. Right? You whip out your phone, um, take a picture on the phone, post it to Facebook immediately. I, I did, okay, I did take a picture, by the way, before my family can actually come and attack that cake. I was successful enough to take a picture. But, uh, yeah, so then I posted on Facebook. I say, yeah, my latest cake, you know? And, um, yeah, um, uh, and you get all these. Huh? fake comments, and they're like, wow, awesome, <laughs> gorgeous cake, okay? Oh, this is the best, mind-blowing, <laughs> okay? And then they're thinking, my God, look at that. This is last week's uh, dal tadka on my backsplash that my maid did, <laughs> forgot to, you know, clean it up. I've just put it up on my um, cooking range and just taken a picture. Um, took a couple of other pictures. Uh, one has my um, uh, something else in the background. Um, there's another one is at a weird angle. And uh, people are thinking, that looks, the color of that cake looks like whatever expletive you, know, expletive you want to put in. I'm not going to say it. And um, check out those edges. And everybody is obsessed with sharp edges, right? She didn't even clean up those edges. On a side note, I had to really rein in my OCD to not clean up those edges, okay? So then, I got um, my kid to pose, right? And I would say, um, I baked a cake with my daughter. And uh, the honest truth is, she didn't come anywhere near that cake <laughs> until then, right? And people would say, cute kid, but let's face it, my kid cannot pose for nuts, right? So this is the current, you know, the general scenario. But what if I took this cake and put this, okay? So then people would be like, so I've got a story. It's a little skewed. I'm sorry about that. The, the picture that's coming up here is a little skewed. It's a little elongated. But um, I think you can, um, most of you can see it. Um, so this picture, um, I'm kind of telling a story here, right? It's a rustic cake. And um, um, there's, a, there's a rustic country vibe going on. And, uh, you know, um, I've got some fork and, uh, you know, cutlery in the, in the front so that um, it's kind of welcoming the person to come take a bite off of that cake. That's the story, right? Um, so let's see how I got to that, all right? So um, I start off with a picture of the cake, right? So then, um, yes, I do use DSLRs. Uh, DSLR is uh, a digital single reflex, a single lens reflex camera. Um, I do use that as opposed to a smartphone. We will be talking about that in some while, in a while. Um, one of the things that you have to keep in mind, it, it, it doesn't matter, at to begin with, it doesn't matter if you use a DSLR or a uh, smartphone. Um, it's very important to get good lighting. 
okay and if you have the option of taking your cakes during daytime then that's really great so i just show you the setup that i have done for that particular picture i've uh, set it up near one of my windows right where there's a good uh, source of light at that time um, so i know at a particular point of time in the particular time of the year uh, which window of mine has the most optimum uh, lighting, right? You don't necessarily want direct sunlight hitting you. But you want a kind of, um, it has to be bright, right? So then, um, if you can see, I have what is technically called a reflector. That's on the side. I've got my uh, backdrops and my um, the, the top, and I've placed my cake there. This thing that you see, it's called a reflector. It's uh, nothing but it reflects the light off from the other side and illuminates the shadows on the, the darker side of your uh, object. And it is important because what you're trying to do is you are trying to soften and or maybe even minimize your shadows as much as possible. You want a nice overall um, bright look unless of course you're going for some mood photography in which case you are dealing with shadows and you know what you're doing right so um, I've taken a couple of uh, different angles of my cake um, that's the edges that I was talking about I was going in for a whole uh, rustic feel and um, Trust me, it took me a while because I kept cleaning up my ed edges and I did not want to do that. I was trying to make a point here. Um, you will notice that I have taken pictures, different uh, angles, sorry, different uh, parts of the cake. Um, I've taken the, the top of the cake. Um, I've taken a shot from the side of the cake. But I have not taken it at a weird angle. I'm, I was standing directly in front of the cake because I've seen this, a lot of people do that. You have your cake in front of you and then you go this way and then you go this way and then you take it this way and you have a weird angle. Please don't do that. At least not for your, the primary picture of your cake, right? So let's see, if you have the time, then probably you want to um, add a few props and do a little bit of styling. So you start off with a cake and you have, you start adding your, uh, you know, the props. So um, the thing is, if you're not into food styling or if you're not into, um, you know, any type of uh, styling to begin with, you do not have to spend a bomb. And we'll talk about investments and all of that a little later on. But um, you can just pick whatever you have uh, around the house and just start styling with that. So I've started with, you know, and yes, it has to be relevant to what you are showing. So I'm showing a cake, it's got eggs in it, it's got milk in it. Um, it has to be relevant to your story. And you start adding little stuff, little by little, do not overcrowd, but um, be uh, light-handed about it, right? Um, so then uh, you end up with a shot where you have a little, uh, you know, place a few cutlery so that it's kind of giving, uh, the story is, it's a nice rustic setting, very informal setting, informal cake. Um, you want the, read, the viewer to um, be tempted to come in, take that fork, take a bite out of that cake, right? Um, set up and backdrop. I don't know if you can, what I see on my computer is way clearer than um, what's up there, so just bear with me. So I've tried to um, change up the backdrops and change up the, uh, the settings a little bit. Um, here we have a very uh, rustic kind of a backdrop. When you change the backdrop, you get a different feel. Right, there's a little, um, there's a whole different uh, uh, vibe going on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you. Um, this is one of the cakes that I've, I did, uh, just to show the different uh, qualities that you can achieve just by changing the um, backdrop. Um, I don't know if you can see. So the first one is just, uh, um, just a white back background. Uh, no fuss, it's uh, pretty minimal, um, 
and then you want to try uh, try using some other settings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When you look at these three cakes, you feel like they're three different cakes, and that's basically because you've uh, tried to change up the um, backdrop and the setting, and and basically you're trying to change the story a little bit. Um, and you can go ahead, take a few uh, detailed shots of your cake. And uh, uh, these are all the secondary pictures that you will be taking. Right? So then let's try changing the story a little bit. Till now, my cake was, you know, rustic setting and um, inviting the person to take a bite, etc., etc. It's strawberry season. And um, uh, like I said, you know, you are, you're. Uh, whatever you present, it has to uh, be relevant to your story. Um, it was, uh, this was a strawberry um, uh, cake. I had strawberries inside. And so then um, I was showing how, you know, um, using strawberries and, and suddenly the whole, the whole uh, picture changed, the whole story changed. And you have this um, uh, very otherwise bland looking cake. But the color of that, those strawberries, it just pops. Okay. When I took this picture, um, usually I take pictures and sometimes I do a little bit of color correction, especially if the lighting, you know, what you have, it's, it's uh, towards evening and it's, it's uh, pretty dark, etc. So um, when I took this picture, the colors on those strawberries were so bright and so deep, I did not have to do any color correction for this. And you can always, you know, continue to say your story, take a, a slice out of that, um, show your layers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Another composition here. So when you know, it's a, it's a different composition. So when you look at this picture, your eyes wander around the picture, but it wanders around the picture where where it's important. You know, the relevance, the relevant points. So first, probably your eyes first go to the cake, and then uh, it wanders around towards the color of the strawberries and then the slice that you've taken out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a good photograph will draw you in. Okay, so then let's talk about using a DLS DSLR versus phone. Um, if you are starting out and uh, you're just starting your business and uh, you don't want to invest in anything, a good smartphone can take good pictures. You don't have to worry about it because smartphones these days are really smart, right? Um, especially if you have an iPhone, the cameras on these phones are really, really good. You can, but um, what you do need to um, keep in mind is the, the lighting because sometimes with smartphones, um, I mean, phone, uh, cameras, it's pretty uh, easy for the lighting to go wrong, and you might end up with a flat uh, picture. But um, when you're starting off, it's it's fine, okay. But if you want to think about investing, so then um, go in for a good um, beginner's uh, DSLR, um, and um, you can. Um, you can get uh, a, a good basic model uh, with uh, two uh, kit lenses. Um, it comes up to around between 30 to uh, 36K or so. And the neighborhood of that, um, I'm sure you can um, get EMI options if you want to go for EMI options. Um, and yes, invest in a good tripod. If you are planning to use a DSLR the correct way, then it, I recommend that you get a really good uh, tripod. Um, you can get anything from 800, uh, uh, thousand, something, etc., all the way up to 8K uh, for a good uh, tripod on Amazon. Um, go ahead. If you want, you're always welcome to ping me personally and ask me for my opinion on what uh, brands you want because there are a couple of brands, um, most of which Canon, uh, Nikon, etc., etc. Um, I can talk to you, walk you through that if you need. Um, so, and then uh, what are the other smaller investments probably you would need to invest in? Um, well, I wouldn't say invest because um, when it comes to backdrops, it's important that you have a clean place to place your cake, right? You need a nice bright spot, which is, yes, that is most important. Um, 
uh, if you want to um, invest in uh, backdrops, there are some um, brands, companies out there that uh, sells backdrops. Um, there was one uh, company that I had initially got in touch with, and they sell their two feet by two feet six uh, mm MDF boards for sixteen hundred plus shipping. What I do, I make my own backdrops. Really super simple, very easy. You might get addicted to it <laughs> if you, you know, start to make your own backdrops. It's not much, you know, and um, you can just um, um, use what you have for the rest of the stuff. You, have, you use what you have. Um, you getting a reflector? What I had shown earlier in the setup that I had shown earlier, that is just a thermocol sheet. I'm sure all of you know, especially those with kids. Um, it's just 25 rupees a sheet. And you can use those. And it works like a charm. OK. So um, talking about whether you need to invest in a DSLR or not. Uh, like I said, lighting is pretty important. Um, so when I start to take pictures of my cakes, you know, unless they are orders, if I'm uh, this particular cake, I, the the strawberry one, I made it um, just to take pictures of because these days I can just go on and on, take a couple of hours, you know, just to take pictures. So the the optimum lighting that I was uh, talking about, that um, in that particular near that particular light source um, was around. Um, I start uh, clicking around uh, 435. And uh, if it goes on for a long time, so this, if you can see that, I took that picture on my phone. That was how dark it was. It was 6.45 and it, it was um, in January, 6.45 in January. And that was how dark it was. There's a little bit of light coming off of the building on the other side. Uh, but that was how dark it was with the settings on my camera. That's what I got. OK? I did not um, do any uh, la uh, editing on this. Um, in fact, um, the picture itself is uh, not what I finally, um, you know. Uh, so you end up taking a lot of pictures during the Don't Don't ever think that uh, you are not a good photographer and you end up taking a lot of pictures. You, any good photographer takes at least 100 pictures and you get just one good one. So um, this was the last picture that I did take. It was that dark, and that's what I got. And this is with the DSLR. OK, so post-processing. Um, if you are into uh, your pictures, and suppose you do take pictures, maybe even on your smartphone, and um, it looks a little less than, you know, a little bland, whatever. Even then, you have to take a look at, you know, take a step back, take a look at the picture that you've uh, taken. Um, you might need to straighten it, because sometimes it could be a little skewed. You need to post a picture that's perfect. If you have uh, products that you sell that are perfect, you need to take a picture that is perfect. So straighten your picture out. And, and you can probably do this on your um, um, laptop, uh, the photo editor, the basic photo editor that's available on your laptop, um, or even on your phone. Your phone has got pretty good photo editors these days. So you can do a little bit of straightening, a little bit of brightening. Um, if you need to crop your pictures, crop your pictures. If you're taking a picture on your smartphone, do not zoom in. Um, take your picture and then crop it. Because if you zoom in, you lose the clarity on those pictures. A um, little bit of color, correct, color correction if you need it. right? Um, you can do that. So um, not sure if you're able to see. This is the, that, the one on, um, what side is that? Left. <laughs> the one on the left is before editing. Um, and this is after editing. I did a little bit of uh, color correction. Um, because when you're taking a picture and you're taking white, there's some, there's a white, there are white elements in your pictures, you want your white looking white and not gray. right? That's what color correction is all about. And um, for those who know it, you know, white balance, etc. OK, so then you tell me, but Lubna, I don't have all the time in the world. I have a running business. And I have a tiered cake that is running out the door 
in five minutes. I don't have time for all of that. If you are a blogger and uh, or a food photographer or a you know cake photographer and you have the time, that's all well and good. But I don't have that kind of time, right? So then. Um, this is one of the cakes that I had done, and this, this is something that I always show uh, people. This cake was running out the door um, at 5 o'clock. I deliver my tiered cakes personally, so um, I got the cab, ordered the cab to come at 5 o'clock. Uh, 4.20, I finished everything, went off to get dressed and clean myself up. 4.40 till four, 5 o'clock, I had 20 minutes to take pictures. Uh, if you want to take good pictures of whatever is running out the door, you have to factor in that time, right? It is very important if you think that you want to capture your cakes, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, that was a really good cake, but I did not have the time to take a picture. Please remember to factor in that amount of time. So maybe you have 10 minutes, so here's the thing, when you start taking pictures, right, and if you are thinking about it seriously and you want to take a picture um, on a DSLR, for say, um, you have to practice. You cannot have a cake that is going out at, in five minutes and then go and check the settings on your phone, I mean, on the camera. You have to know, um, you have to be um, well-versed enough to know that, yes, this part this is the setting. It doesn't take too long, trust me. All, all you need to do is just a couple of uh, practice and um, you know, a couple of uh, uh, times that you take out and just note down your settings. So you've got all of that down. If you are a running business, um, or if you are a running bakery, for example, I know a lot of uh, bakeries that have their dedicated spots for um, um, taking pictures. They have their setup ready. Um, His Highness Ron Ben Israel has a uh, dedicated setup, you know, and it's always there. And he's his his pictures are pretty. Um, you can see it the moment you see his cakes. You know that it's come out of his pl um, uh, studio because, um, of course, the work. Um, and it always has this crisp white backdrop, always. So um, have a dedicated spot. If you're a home baker, it could be your dining table uh, where the lighting is uh, you know, optimal. It could be your dining table. So um, be able to set it up in just a couple of minutes. Whip out your uh, camera, take a few pictures, and uh, um, you have at least a good picture, right? Taking pictures at the venue, I know a lot of uh, people, um, including myself, who uh, deliver their wedding cakes. And trust me, no venue has ever got good lighting. Okay, There was this one cake that I really, really regret not having taken a picture because I sometimes I do assemble my cakes at the venue and I forgot to take my tripod. So. DSLR users, you know that it's important uh, to use a tripod, especially when you have really bad lighting. As I showed you in that picture, that um, the one that I took at 6.45 in the night, you have to have a tripod. Otherwise, there is, um, uh, you, you tend to shake, and it's, you don't get a clear picture. Um, remember to take your camera. Remember, remember to take your uh, tripod. And remember to reach the venue early. Right? And I learned this one time when, because usually what happens, I'm always in a hurry and I'm always um, five minutes late and, and uh, the person, the, the bride is all already there and you don't want the bride to be already there, right? And um, so this one time I came and I set up and I had half an hour still more. There was nobody in the venue and um, I just kept taking, clicking pictures. And I got really good pictures. I was really happy that I got that because I did not, uh, I, sometimes I assemble my cake and take it to the venue, in which case I can uh, you know, take a picture at home, um, which turns out uh, much better, by the way. Sometimes I at assemble my cake at the venue, and uh, you have to uh, take a picture there. 
right? So um, when I was taking these pictures, this, this is uh, my tallest cake till date. It was 1.2 meters tall. Um, it was like just a head smaller than me. So um, I went, uh, I took my tripod. I went all the way to the back of the hall. Uh, it, the hall was empty. What I'm trying to say is I had a lot of time to take pictures. And if you can manage your time and factor your time in accordingly, you have, you can take really good pictures, right? Um, yeah. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right. So then, um, you've taken your pictures. You've edited them if it needs. Um, here's the thing: never send out any pictures of yours into the big bad internet without your logo. And there are many stories that I can I can tell you that you know people um, um, taking you know, stealing pictures and all of that. All right. So then um, our time is almost up. Um, if you have any questions, do we have five minutes for questions? Okay. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, you can ask me. Um, follow me, please. <laughs>